What's going on, boys? Today we are talking a bit about substances, and maybe we'll throw in a few other little things. I've been researching Detura, and I heard Terence McKenna discuss his experiences with it. Now, people constantly talk about how awful Detura is, but McKenna's experience with it was not terrible. His was more, as he said, the plant letting it know it hadn't chosen him. This was not for him. Not disrespectful or mean or horrifying the way many people describe Detura, but more a polite rejection, as compared to his experiences with mushrooms. McKenna and those little bastards were made for each other. And I think that's more than just a saying. I think certain people are chosen by certain substances. For instance, I've had the opportunity now to try weed illegally a few times. It's a bit of a hassle, but it's worth doing right. I mean, the system is going to fuck you whether or not you break laws. So you might as well try to follow the laws and not give them an easy excuse. And I was very excited to try weed, or at least THC, because I've met many people in my life who have been chosen by marijuana. As in, they have more profound experiences with weed than they do with harder psychedelics. I had the complete opposite experience, each time. And I know it's not a quality issue, because the people I was with were enjoying it, came out of it with net positive experiences. I, however, hated it, and I think it hated me. Because while other people are having these calming experiences, or expanding experiences, all I'm feeling is stressed and confused and weak and scrambled and hyper aware of the fact that I'm scrambled. I can't think about anything, I can't do anything, and I am acutely aware I can't think about or do anything. There was no mental positive. But at the same time, it wasn't so stressful I could learn anything from it. It, for me, was nothing but a big, mocking waste of time. But then you compare these experiences with my experiences with alcohol, a substance I think I am chosen for, unfortunately. I met God, or an angel, on red wine. Wine is what set off my spiritual journey in earnest. I don't really drink much these days. I'll have a beer or a little glass of wine here or there with people when it's appropriate, but I don't drink, drink that much anymore. But when I do, it's an event. I feel spoiled by Venus when I'm drinking. Every single sensation is heightened and tuned for pleasure, and the mental barriers, higher and lower, disappear. One of the reasons I think people can be chosen by substances is there is an as above, which is the spiritual plane or planes we're aware of, but I also believe there is a even lower so below. We normally interpret us as so below. I think there are sentiences lower. Alcohol taught me to enjoy and respect as if it were animated material. That's why I am so particular and broke. I like nice shit, and I think nice shit likes me. But you see, when I'm drinking, I feel like Venus is introducing me to her pals across the realms. I have a threatening, compensating ass knife longer than my forearm. It is one of the nicest things I own. But it goes beyond simple materialism. It gives me good vibes. 
and I realized the last time I drank, it actually cares about me. Its essence cares about me. And I can't communicate with it or other materials, objects, in that way, sober. And I'm aware other people who drink don't have these experiences. They have experiences with alcohol more similar to my experiences with marijuana. Just brain shutdown. Whereas when I'm drinking, my brain is working in overdrive and receiving messages it otherwise couldn't. Messages from higher realms. One of my favorite songs, which I'll link in the description, is called Cold Beer by a guy named Jesse Stewart, I think is his last name. He's dead now, he overdosed. But it's a song about a person's relationship with alcohol as if it were a person. And the only person who is never going to betray you, the only person who cares about you and wants to take care of you. And I think in substance circles, this is more literal than people who aren't immersed or haven't been immersed in substances realize. You can hear McKenna talk about his relationship with mushrooms. I was drinking at a bar about two years ago now, and I stepped outside to smoke. The best place to meet people is at a bar outside smoking. There's only one other dude outside because it's cold, and he hits me with the eyebrows up thing, comes over, asks me what I'm drinking, I tell him it's wild turkey, and he says, oh, you're getting down with the bird. I know her well. But she and I had a falling out a few years ago. And I asked him what he meant, and he described to me having a near-death experience on wild turkey. And the control that substance wielded over his life. These days, he can drink any other form of alcohol. He can drink other whiskeys. But if he drinks wild turkey, his life starts going downhill again. Now, the reason I bring up these examples is one of the messages I received from somewhere else had to do with these. It was a feeling of love and sorrow in these connections. Your entire life and relationship with a substance can serve to guide another seeker. The culmination of your searching and knowledge and connection with a substance can express itself in one thing you create, be it a song like Jesse's, or a story outside a bar like this dude's, and then you can die having fulfilled your purpose. Living your entire life and then dying to guide the right person at the right moment. It was a confusing feeling of, that sucks, and that's beautiful. We crawl over similar bodies, so our bodies can then be crawled over. Now, while I'd like to try harder psychedelics, I don't know of a feasible way to do them legally anytime soon. And I'm afraid ego dissolution type substances are not going to be the way to go, at least for me. I have a feeling ego enhancers are going to serve me better materially and spiritually. I have a feeling I would really like cocaine or opium, but I don't think either of those are ever going to be legalized in the States, and maybe that's a good thing. Alcohol puts a bad enough hurting on me when I really enjoy it these days anyway. I can't enjoy it these days because it's so devastating. For me, alcohol feels like the loving and insightful version of the neuron firer from The Onion. Everything, every neuron fires in an instant and you reap all those benefits except then for the next however long 
you're dealing with the consequences. You have the best date in the nicest club you could imagine. Except, somewhere along the way, you get separated and have to fight your way out because now everyone is gnashing teeth and claws. And then once you're finally outside the club, you aren't out of the woods. Perhaps literally, you could be in deep, dark forests and that would be fitting. And you're bleeding out on the ground. But I think Detura might become a Soa thing. I need to do more research on it. All I see around Detura are two things. One major group says it's the worst thing ever. I mean, they're called Devil's Trumpets. They are the worst. They send you to hell. And then there is a minority group who agrees Detura is the worst. It sends you to hell. But you also gain something in it. Something more difficult to describe and infinitely more valuable than what they have found in psychedelics. There is something in the horror worth finding. And I don't know about you, but that sounds like it would be up our alley. Maybe the people who found something in it were chosen by it. Chosen to learn from it. Maybe it's a very selective and spiteful substance. Maybe the reason you hear so many horror stories is it doesn't like most of the people who consume it. But then you have experiences, rare experiences, like McKenna's in which the substance recognizes him for what he is and respects him enough not to torment him, but to politely let him know they are not going to work out. Maybe the substance would like us. I'm finding the worse things get in my life, the more powerful and focused I become. And that process is the worst. If I thought there were any way I could die and be released from my mission or whatever contract I signed, to be here and do whatever I'm supposed to do, I would take it. We're in the end times. This isn't going to end well. It seems like people and the noosphere know something really bad is coming. Maybe the really bad plant is willing to give us clarity, purpose, and equipment in its expression of horror. I think cops gave me PTSD, actually PTSD, which expresses itself in ways I didn't even notice. As in, at work, I make a habit of going to the windows, which isn't that uncommon, but Otter is walking out of restaurants, not dining and ditching, or ditching and whatever the fuck saying I gotta go piss and then walking outside and standing outside and doing that a few times over the course of a meal that's not normal I didn't notice and I didn't notice I was doing that what's a little more potential trauma if it's guiding I'm going to do a little more research on Detura and if it goes anywhere I'll let you know at worst, I'll have some very pretty, ominous flowers in my area. In summary, I think people are chosen by certain substances to receive their knowledge in their way. And Detura might be Soas. Maybe one of those keywords in the same way branding is. Choosing the pain and the terror and facing them alone and learning from them. But that about ripity wraps this one up. I hope you enjoyed watching because I certainly enjoyed making it. Refreshingly short this time. Like if you enjoyed, this helps me out a lot. Subscribe if you haven't because we do this shit sometimes in comments. That's love hearing from you. Do you have any experiences with Detura? What substances do you feel chosen by? 
What have you learned from them? Thanks again for watching already. Really, a lot of fun on this channel. So much fun. In fact, you can eat about 50 fun nuggets, which sounds foul, but it is fun. And that's so much for me on this channel. And I look forward to doing this with you guys again in the future.